happy that you've you've uh, you you you've touched on and, uh, and this and gender dynamics that. yeah gender dynamics in development is something else that is very interesting yes, yes. to touch on because yeah. there are a lot of people i mean when you're pregnant it doesn't mean your brain is not working exactly. sometimes <laughs> circumstances do yeah you know like mine was a cs so mm. i couldn't move around a lot yeah, as you would have desired and to. yet somebody mm. actually trusted me mm. and they mm. didn't write me mm. off on account mm. that mm. i was pregnant mm. And, and so yet you were able to deliver for you. I delivered mm, and it mm, was a very good mm, piece of work. Mm, mm. So those gender dynamics are mm, things to consider. Mm, Women mm, need to know that mm, uh, being a woman and mm, at the reproductive age mm, and uh, sometimes you are actually cut off even yeah. sometimes women cut themselves off, off voluntarily yeah, to yeah. take care of their children. Yeah, exactly. My story is mm. that I was able to do both concurrently mm. and I think I would have been a horrible mom because mm. I'm a high energy, mm. you know, individual. I, I and mm. <laughs> I need to be doing something as mm. I take care. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, if I focus all on the baby, I mm. might end up, you know, mm. suffocating, mm. Mm. you know, mm. them mm. with all this energy. And that's interesting. So for mm. me being able to do the same, because the worry was, mm. What will my career path look like mm. after I take a break? Mm. Because this uh, it's a bit unforgiving. Because mm. you come back and realize that people younger than you already, mm. you know, bypassed mm. you mm. by far. Mm. Anyway, where do you start mm. after mm. you've taken a break? Mm. And mm. yet it's for the good of the family. So mm. it depends. But mm. for me, I, I would have wanted a situation where I worked and mm. and took care of the family. Mm. And I'm mm. glad that I got that opportunity to be able to do right. so. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Fantastic. So. Uh, that's one of the main projects that you know takes yeah. you through that period yeah. um and and then is there, there others there are others <laughs> yeah what one, are the significant one landmark one, one mm -hmm. was a uh, the kenya youth employment project right which is hosted by the world bank hosted by the world bank yes yeah. and or conceptualized by the world bank yeah. in relation to the government yeah and they needed a background paper on the economic uh the political economy mm -hmm. of youth in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I got a call. I mm -hmm. didn't even know that mm -hmm. it existed. Mm -hmm. But based on the youth work I had done, mm -hmm. uh, I got a call and was asked if I could, I, I could do mm -hmm. the work. Mm -hmm. So these dots are connecting from Paris. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what I, what now, uh, for me, I think also part of what we call experts mm -hmm. is those repeated opportunities to mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. But it means that for you to get those repeat jobs, you have to do the one you are given mm -hmm. quite well. Mm -hmm. Because that's what brings the second and third opportunity. Mm, mm. So for anyone you thinking that maybe you want to get into this space mm. and think that you can do a short, people talk. The, all mm. these people are in the same network. Mm. The people with these opportunities. Mm. So I'll, I'll, for example, ask who's the best, you know, communications person. Mm. If one, two, three people say Maxine, mm. I'm likely to take Maxine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so your last job, mm. actually, the, the point to take here is that your last job is yeah. your ticket to the next. You're as good jobs. as your last job. Exactly. Yeah. And it's your ticket to the next yeah. 10 jobs. Yeah. So that was a wonderful opportunity mm. because now mm. the profile in the website is growing mm. and it's beginning to say, hey, you have mm. clients like World Bank, mm. you have clients like Norwegian mm. Church, mm. Mm. had clients. Danida called me back mm. and asked that I could maybe talk about, you know, have a stint with them mm. in terms of how they proceed with their mm. quality book mm. so those types of clients mm. is, is a good profile for you as a consultant mm. because then people are, are able to have the confidence mm. of your delivery right they say a lot about mm. you know, the type of client mm. mm. so those and many mm. others mm. i mean mm. it's it's been a wonderful journey mm. Mm. yeah and and and, and the, so you began it as long view consult i began it as long view mm -hmm. consult and mm -hmm. the idea was to do a consultancy mm -hmm. as i went along mm -hmm. i realized that uh, consultancy can also be very exhausting mm -hmm. but you're also giving 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 yeah and i i i remember the world i came in uh, from mm -hmm. i'd never been about doing work to be paid mm -hmm. it was fundraising yeah so what i i rotate around is mm -hmm. fundraising mm -hmm. to be able to do the work mm -hmm. So of course, being a foresight practitioner, also mm -hmm. I'm alive to the fact that mm -hmm. fundraising is also having its own dynamics, dynamics yeah, and so mm -hmm. balancing the two is mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. But I think I, um, I, as I continued working, mm -hmm. part of the hunger that I started feeling mm -hmm. is that you know when somebody gives you a consultancy, they pretty much determine mm -hmm. what you're gonna be working mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. and a lot of futures work was coming, research policy was coming, mm -hmm. but I, because I, I have deliberately made a decision mm. to identify myself as predominantly a futurist. Mm -hmm. I wanted to also 
make a contribution mm -hmm. to the foresight world. Right. And so I felt like there's no way this is gonna like align with the consultancy. Mm. So um, um, because it will be about convincing people you need this kind, and mm. if they don't need it, they don't need it, right? Mm. They won't pay for it. Mm. And so I registered a foundation, mm -hmm. and the foundation then to do the public good work. That's not as active as I would like it to mm -hmm. be, mm. but the idea was to to then do trainings mm. uh, for people because I mean, if you're only so many, so few futurists. Mm. And yet the problems of development are increasing, mm. becoming more challenging. Mm. We need more people on deck. Mm. If you look at uh, the SDGs, they mm. do say that foresight thinking, systems thinking, mm. critical thinking, mm. complexity thinking, mm. which are all subsets of futures, mm. are the 21st century knowledge skills that people need to have. Mm. So then I, there's an opportunity here to build more capacity right. in this area within organizations. Mm even as you do the actual futures work mm -hmm. that you're contracted to do. Mm. So I set up the foundation to be able to do those things. Mm. And my first point of call mm. was then to go back to my networks. Mm -hmm. And um, the YMCA was a wonderful partnership. Mm -hmm. And they said, look, we have, uh, you know, country, you know, continent wide, um, you know, networks. Mm -hmm. Apart from you doing this, mm. I ask, can I train mm. uh, young people in mm. your circles? Because you do leadership, you, mm. you change projects within communities. Mm. I think this is a skill young people could have. Yeah. If you do a history and an analysis of who are the foresight practitioners, mm -hmm. you realize that there's a certain age. It's mm. an older group of people, obviously. predominantly white, mm. predominantly in mm. South Africa. Mm. So mm. other parts and regions mm. of Africa don't mm. have that capacity. It's an elite group. It's an elite group. Yeah. So I, I felt like, again, mm. my passion, uh, just seeing the gaps of unemployment, mm -hmm. You need these skills there mm, mm. so that these people create their own opportunities with mm. that kind of training. Mm. So that's that's the linkage I was making. Mm. And so I, I trained mm. uh, a first cohort mm -hmm. in uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. It was so amazing. The feedback was so amazing. People mm. began getting jobs like this. I'm mm. not promising that when mm. you do the course, mm. you'll get the mm. job. Mm. But um, it resonated a lot. Mm. And from the feedback, they said it was a healthy Mm. break from the usual things that mm. they are taught about mm. it was new it was mm. interesting it was mm. challenging mm. it was a new way of thinking mm. Mm. there was an appreciation mm. and ymca itself last mm. year mm. actually came and said you know what mm. now we want a formal partnership mm. where you now train for us another cohort fantastic so and speaking of training you yourself mm -hmm. had gone and gotten trained you had pursued this yes so remember i dropped out at <laughs> nairobi yeah then I did a master's at USIU. Yeah. I got a, the Coca-Cola scholarship. All and right. did a master's in uh, organizational development. Yeah. Now this one, it was the opportunity. Yeah. And then I began wondering at this level, mm -hmm. what is the relationship between IR, international mm -hmm. relations mm -hmm. and OD. And OD. Mm -hmm. Organizational development. Development, mm -hmm. yes. And I'm wondering, I'm mm. wondering. And now here I want to do a PhD. Yeah. And I'm wondering how do even these things align? At, at what point had you pursued the OD? Uh, you got the Coca-Cola sponsorship in, in 2010. So you are still at IA. Yes. All right. And okay. I'm telling you, now yeah. I'm trying to do a youth project. I'm yeah. in school. Also, that was a crazy it period. It was also a crazy yeah. period. Yeah. You're married at the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. You you're are. School. You're in school. You're, you're still traveling. You're still doing. Exactly. Oh, okay. And and the point and then, here is mm -hmm. that um, if you really want to grow in this space, yeah, you got to exert I mean, yourself. They, yeah, you have to exert yourself. Yeah. And and you with really, no excuse. Yeah. Yeah. And and it ends. I mean, yeah. it's just one year. Yeah. So accept one year or yeah. a lot of intensity. And as they say, um, yeah. in, there's a Swahili saying, "Vunja mifupa kama bado meno, <laughs> meno iko. Ipo. Like yeah. there is just a time to exert yourself yeah. and yeah, exert yourself is, fully because later on maybe there isn't as much energy, and and though as you've continued, probably it doesn't the seem to change. Yeah, yeah. the experience is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. But and I you think manage to also learn how to prioritize differently later. Yeah. And in different seasons. And in different life. seasons, yeah. So but in 20, For the 2016, mm -hmm. I, I, I had already made a decision I wanted and I had been searching. Yeah. The challenge was to find a, a, a PhD in foresight mm. that aligns yeah. with working in Africa, mm. the dynamics of Africa, mm. because a lot of them were very philosophical. Mm. So what happened was um, 
I found one mm -hmm. at uh, Regent University in the US mm -hmm. that even ties in with everything I have done. Right. So this PhD offers leadership mm -hmm. and it's, it's a PhD on leadership and future thinking. thinking. But it's mm. leadership, it's international, and it's, it's these are sort of like an element to international consulting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which sort of aligns with IR, yeah. my background in IR, mm. international mm. Uh, relations study mm. to some mm. extent. Mm. But more importantly, mm. it's leadership at a cross board, mm. including organizations. Mm. So to me, it was like it was the perfect, it was together. bringing everything together. Yeah, and you are coming into that consulting at international level anyway. Beautiful. So If I wanted to now yeah. grow yeah. from the levels I had been working on, yeah. I needed to really sharpen my skills yeah. so that uh, I can compete with the best in yeah, the world. Yeah. So this PhD was an opportunity to do yeah, that. Fortunately, yeah. I also got a scholarship, yeah. a partial scholarship right. to then uh, do the work, yeah. do, to pursue the PhD. Yeah. And then yeah. I got pregnant. Uh -huh, with your now, at this bond. point, we are planning. Yeah. I, I got a second, I was pregnant. Yes, so yes. by the time we were going for residency, I was eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Your, your life. <laughs> so what I did yeah. is I thought if I start giving excuses now, yeah. I will never get this started. Oh dear. So I made, I talked to my doctor. Mm. I made a decision to go to campus and present myself and say, I am very committed, but as you can see, I have another project on board. So allow me to take a pause mm from the onset, mm. get my baby, and mm. then start in 2017. So I'd have six months mm. to do that. And they let you? And just imagine, at mm. this point, mm -hmm. eh, I also have a consultancy in Ghana. Whoa. And I'm doing a, a very interesting futures Cut project TND. with an organization that funds women Africa, mm -hmm. women's organizations Africa. Mm -hmm. And so I learned from the US, eight months pregnant, or towards eight months, you learned actually eight months precisely. You land in Kenya. I do at the week. Mm -hmm. I come back, mm -hmm. and then I am off. The next day, I'm off to Ghana to now start because I signed a contract, and they knew I was pregnant. They're like, "We will, we support you," and I, they made it very comfortable. I did the one week. So when I was coming from Ghana, they almost refused me to board the flight, and I said, "You know, unless you want my kid to be Ghanaian, <laughs> just allow me to travel home." And fortunately, I had the sense to get a doctor's appoint, a, a doctor's uh, letter. So I, I see there. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I know. I flew back, and two weeks I was getting my baby. All right, we have to change battery. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll come back and pick it up from there. <laughs>